Today we're going to be doing an experiment where we try to make Plaster of Paris rocks made in Windland Scenics molds a little bit more durable. Plaster of Paris is great because it's cheap, but it breaks pretty easily. After using various techniques to make them more durable, we're going to use a technique called leopard spotting to color the rocks, so roll the intro. Alright, the goal of today's experiment is to make plaster of Paris rocks more durable, so we're going to apply some watered down solutions to the surface to make them a little bit stronger. Uh, using these various products seen here. Starting on the right, we have a scenic cement, which is basically a watered-down glue, some water-based polyurethane, um, two different types of wood glue. We have a wood filler, as well as PVA glue, a two-part epoxy, Rust-Oleum lacquer, and a powder-based water putty from Durham's. We're gonna be watering down these solutions and applying them to the surface. Before we get started with the experiment, here's a short how-to guide on how to make plaster of Paris. First we're going to start with a half a cup of cold water and a cup of plaster. Two things, we want the water as cold as we can get it that will slow the reaction, as well as we want to add the plaster to the water and not vice versa. If you do it the other way around, you'll get a bunch of clumps and the plaster won't be mixed very thoroughly. We have a flexible container so we can squeeze it to get the dried plaster out of it. Here we're adding the cold water and being sure to add the plaster to the water, sprinkling it on the surface and letting it soak in. You can see here I'm waiting for, I'm just pouring a little bit on top and then letting it soak in so it automatically mixes in. At some point the plaster is going to stop soaking in just like this, and we'll sort of mix in the last little bit, being sure to mix very gently, because that the mixing will actually start the chemical reaction. So here I'm pretty happy with the consistency. It's maybe a little thin, but that's okay. Next, we're gonna try to get as many bubbles as we can out earlier. Um, we just, I'm being a little rough with it, but just try to get some of the bubbles out. What I'm spraying here is a mixture of dishwasher fluid and water, just to sort of break the surface tension. I'm gonna pour into one side of the rock mold, letting it fill in, um, and then tap the molds to sort of get rid of any remaining bubbles. If ever you need to fill in the rest of the mold, you can use, uh, I'm using a putty knife to sort of move the plaster around. Be careful not to remove the rocks too early or else it'll get cracking like you see here. The best way you can do it is get a cheap like $15 fan uh, and dry them this way overnight preferably. Now that we've let them dry overnight, we're going to remove the rocks from the mold carefully. You'll notice bits of flash falling off of these. But they're now dry and we don't really have to worry about the actual rock cracking. Uh, some of the deeper molds, oftentimes they'll split in half or whatnot, but those can be easily repaired or just used as is uh, for smaller parts of your layout or what have you. Be on the lookout for cheap Tupperware, they make perfect storage for your plaster rocks. And there you have it! With our first experiment, we're going to try applying the solution to the surface, then testing the rigidity and coloring using leopard spotting. First up is polyurethane. This is a water-based polyurethane, so it should be pretty easy to water down. I'm going to try it in a couple different consistencies by first just applying it directly from the can, and then adding a little bit of water, applying that, and then adding a little bit more water and applying that. This product happens to be a gloss polyurethane, that wasn't really my intention. You can probably get satin or matte versions, but it probably won't affect uh, how well it improves the rigidity of the plaster of Paris. So again, we're just applying it to the surface here in various uh, consistencies. Um, with the rocks, we have thick rocks and thin rocks to sort of get a general idea of how that works. 
now that we're done here we're gonna test with a hobby knife here just to see how well it improved the surface rigidity so it's hard to tell from the video but i actually have to apply quite a bit of pressure here in order to get for this to chip so as far as just general wear and tear from chipping it probably provides a lot of rigidity now I'm going to apply some cuts to the surface. Again, on the video, you can't see that I'm, I'm actually applying quite a bit of pressure here. And the cuts, while they're there, aren't chipping the surface. So overall, I'd say that's pretty good. It still breaks in half, though. Again, I have to apply more pressure than I normally would have to. And looking at the side, you can see it hasn't quite soaked in. The middle is very white and chalky. The hammer here basically breaks the rock, but you can see from the video, it actually kind of sticks there. There's like this sticky, well, polyurethane surface to it. So um, in general, it might actually save your rocks from a small drop. The thin rocks are still very brittle. Now we're gonna use the leopard spotting technique to color the rocks, which is just a matter of applying a gray and spotting it with yellow spots around the rock to kind of give it a natural look. You can see here that the stain is not soaking into the rock. Normally it soaks in like a sponge. You can even see the yellow kind of rippling there. We know that some of these products are waterproof when they dry, so they're going to adversely affect how they get stained. These rocks would probably be best painted, but it's still good to see. And like we thought, as the stain dries here, um, it's sitting on the surface and is pretty easily rubbed off because it's now waterproof. Again, these rocks would probably be painted instead of staining them. So in conclusion, the polyurethane increases the scratch and break resistance of the rocks, but prevents the staining using the leopard spotting method. So you'll probably have to paint them afterwards. Next up is Scenic Cement from Woodland Scenics. This seems like a watered down glue. It's normally used to apply flock to your layout or terrain or whatever you're making. I'm just applying it here straight out of the bottle. I don't anticipate this is gonna give it much surface rigidity or any sort of structural integrity, but it'll be interesting to see if it impedes anything as far as staining. So like we thought, realistically, the surface is just as fragile. It sort of chips away with a very light abrasive. It breaks in half fairly easily. Large pieces break without much force at all. You don't have to be a genius to know that the hammer is still going to smash this thing into pieces. Now we're gonna see how well it takes a stain. And it seems like the scenic cement does not impede the stain whatsoever. This is, I wouldn't be hard pressed to tell you the difference between this rock and something that had nothing applied to it. So, while this isn't necessarily something you would do to increase the rigidity of your rocks, you can rest assured that applying scenic cement to your layout to either add grit or whatnot uh, should not impede the stain whatsoever. This is pretty much applying as I would expect a rock that had nothing done to it. So conclusion time. Basically this does nothing for scratch or break resistance, but it takes a stain as usual even after being applied. Next up are the wood glues, Type Bond 1 and 2. The only real difference here is one is water resistant and the other is not. Um, here I'm going to be mixing them with water in approximately two parts water, one part glue. We'll just mix that up and apply it to the surface here pretty liberally actually. Make sure to coat the entire rock here. Same process is going to apply for the Type Bond 2, which is the waterproof version. You can notice it's a little bit thicker, a little bit yellower, but we're going to do about two parts glue to one part water. 
again applying pretty liberally to the rocks to get a nice even coat. Now the results for the Type Bond 1 are basically the same as the polyurethane. It doesn't really impede breaking in half here, though it sort of creates a skin on the surface. Obviously the hammer still smashes it. And as far as surface abrasions go, uh, they're pretty well impeded. Um, general wear and tear shouldn't cause scratches or anything in the actual plaster itself. Now like the polyurethane before it, it doesn't take the stain quite as well as say scenic cement or just using straight plaster. You can see here the yellow is pretty runny and the thin pieces don't take it at all. Now for the tight bond too, and despite giving it an even coat, originally, at least I, I thought so, you can see that it's kind of mottled and there's various parts that definitely got more glue and are more yellow. They still break under pressure, but there is some resistance, sort of like the polyurethane. Surprisingly, at least this piece held up pretty well to the hammer. I'm not sure if it, just the shape of it was sort of impact resistant, but it does seem that it has some sort of resistance to impact. I would equate this to the impact resistance that the polyurethane had previously. It seems to be cut resistant, or at least it doesn't chip when you cut it. Leaves some scratches, but doesn't really affect the surface that much. You can see it still breaks in half for the small pieces. And as we apply the stain, you can see it doesn't take the stain. In fact, I think this is the worst one yet as far as taking the stain. So conclusion time, looks like the wood glue does about as much as the polyurethane. It increases the scratch and break resistance, but definitely prevents staining and would require painting the rocks afterwards. Next up is the wood filler. Now the hope of this product is since it's supposed to act and behave like wood, that it is going to be able to take a stain pretty well. It says it's easy clean up with water, which says to me that it's water-based. I think I'm doing about a one-to-one -one mixture of wood filler to water here. Again, just applying it pretty liberally over the rocks. You can see here that it's already starting to sort of add a grit to the surface of the rock. In fact, you can see it right here in this clip. Obviously this wood filler is not going to help with break resistance at all. The hammer is still going to smash it to pieces. But as far as surface scratches go, the wood filler itself scratches a lot like the plaster. In fact, it's probably weaker than the pr plaster, but the plaster itself is unaffected. You can see it actually adds a bit of material to the surface. Break resistance for the thin pieces is obviously unaffected. And as we stain it here, you can see it takes the stain and it's a little bit more waterproof than maybe just straight plaster, but it, it does absorb the pigment and it almost creates a higher contrast finish than just straight plaster. So the conclusion on this one is it slightly increases the scratch resistance though one could argue that it's just the filler itself falling off. Doesn't increase break resistance, but it stains just fine. Next up is one that wasn't in the original list, but we're going to try craft paint to see if it has any effect. We're going to water it down probably one to one. Uh, well, a little bit less than one to one here, but basically we want to water it down enough that it soaks into the plaster and doesn't actually leave a lot of paint onto the surface. 
We're using white paint for obvious reasons, and here we're gonna try a few with completely undiluted paint just to see what the effect is. Here we are with the painted pieces. It feels less chalky and it feels like there is a seal on the surface of the plaster. Obviously, the thin pieces are going to break. The thick pieces break and it seems like there's little to no extra resistance. And obviously the hammer is going to destroy this just like anything else. As far as painting goes, it does accept the stain pretty well. Not quite as well as plain plaster, but it's definitely soaking in a little bit. It's actually soaking in better than I expected. The yellow is usually a pretty good indicator. You can see here, it's not soaking in very well at all um, as far as the yellow. Darker pigments you might have a better luck with. Here's next to a control. You can see it's much lighter. We're gonna have to let it dry to see the end result, probably. But you can see here that there's a lot more white showing through. Sort of like the other ones that had problems drying, you can see it kind of, you can scratch it off, essentially. Well, the conclusion with this one is it does increase the scratch resistance, but it doesn't really increase the break resistance and makes staining a little bit more difficult, though. I mean, painting is always an option and it works pretty good. Next up is PVA glue or all purpose glue. I believe Elmer's is a PVA glue. Um, we're just going to dilute this. This bottle is a little old and I can I had some trouble getting glue out and into it, but after a lot of trying, finally got enough glue out to where I can make a about one to one mixture. It went on a little thick on the first one, I could see it pooling, so I tried on the others to make a little bit more diluted solution, so I did so. The surface on this was pretty good. It actually did impede scratches quite a bit, actually. I was really surprised. Break resistance was a little bit better, though this is a pretty small piece, so it was tough to say. Obviously the PVA glue doesn't have a ton of effect on uh, the hammer. And when we're applying the stain here, you can see that basically it's just running. It's not soaking into the model or the, the rock really at all. For those flat pieces where you can get a lot of it to pull up, that's fine. But if it's a vertical piece, you can see it just running. The yellow especially just runs right off the model. After letting it dry for a little bit, you can see it's still very, very white. So in conclusion, you can see that PVA glue does increase the scratch resistance, increases the break resistance slightly, but makes staining a lot more difficult. I'd recommend painting after doing this. Now for the two-part epoxy, uh, this was mostly because I was going through the hardware store figuring, you know, what would make the surface harder and uh, resin will do that. But one thing resin doesn't do is really dilute well with water. Um, I should be wearing gloves while doing this. I learned my lesson in the middle of it here, but I'm not really a chemist, so I don't know what you would dilute resin with, but with water, it just kind of becomes a soupy mess. Here I'm just brushing it on, though the cure time for this was actually pretty short by the end of it. I was having difficulty even applying to the rocks. The surface after it dries is obviously very rigid. Um, some of them even stuck to the little platform there. Obviously it makes it harder to break. There's this big husk of resin on top. The hammer is going to have a difficult time getting through it, but I mean, you can still crush it. But basically, this is a pile of hot garbage 
um you can't cut through it but you also really can't paint it because all the detail is gone and obviously you can't stain it so this was kind of a, a joke really So conclusion time, it increases the scratch resistance and the break resistance, but basically makes a bunch of useless garbage for you. So I uh, wouldn't recommend it. Next up is the spray lacquer. Went out to the garage for this. You want to spray in a well-ventilated area, but I did what I would consider a pretty light coat. For terrain, anyway. It gained a lot of scratch resistance. This felt did not feel like putting a knife into plaster at all. As far as brake resistance, there was maybe a little bit, but it was hard to say. And the hammer didn't really have any problem with it. The small pieces were still very fragile, and as we apply the stain here, it is very reminiscent of the PVA glue. Things that are lying flat will obviously um, have enough pigment pool up to actually stain it a color, but where it runs, it kind of doesn't, it doesn't leave a lot of pigment behind. As this dries though, what was interesting and kind of different than a lot of the solutions that left a hard surface was I couldn't really rub off the pigment. So it's almost like the lacquer actually did get stained. And you can see with the control, I can actually, if I rub hard enough, actually get some of the pigment off. So it does increase your scratch resistance and your break resistance slightly, but does make staining harder. This would be a good one to paint afterwards. Now Durham's is a powder water putty. You mix it yourself. The instructions basically say three to one. I didn't know this till I got home, but it actually says you can cast things in it. So it'll be kind of interesting someday to try to add it to my plaster of Paris. I mixed it probably a little less than three to one because I didn't actually want it to make a cast. I just wanted it to soak in and sort of give it a more rigid surface. And so that's what I've done here, is watered it down probably more than 3 to 1, at least I think I did. It applied really easily. It stains the plaster yellow, so if you're relying on it being white, that may not be desirable. You can see the difference in color here from just an untouched piece of plaster. As far as the scratch resistance, it's a little bit more scratch resistant. I think just general handling, it will probably hold up better. I found a piece that had a little bit more of like a thicker solution applied to it, and it was definitely obvious that this solution is providing some rigidity. The breakability is about the same, maybe a little improved. It didn't get worse, that's for sure. The small pieces are still brittle, and the hammer still has no problem going through it. Now this is where it got kind of interesting. Frankly, I could not tell the difference applying the stain. I mean, the places that were stark white before are obviously a little bit yellowed, but in this case, the way I'm leopard spotting it with a yellow umber, that's kind of desirable. By the end, with this control, they're almost indistinguishable, but the surface was definitely more rigid. So in conclusion, the scratch resistance is pretty good, and maybe there's some breaking resistance there, but it stains just as if it were regular plaster. So this is a really good candidate for putting on your layouts prior to staining them. Here we have some of the results. You can see that the water putty is almost indistinguishable from the bit in the middle. The others are either kind of washed out or just too white. Same with the paint and these various glues. 
The scenic cement seems to be a little bit lighter, but I think that's because I just didn't put as much pigment on. But the PVA glue is definitely noticeable. Ultimately, I think the water putty is probably the best. With some of these techniques, I want to do a second part to this video where I paint them first or pigment them first and then apply some of these solutions on top of that. You can see these wood glues basically have the same effect as the PVA, but they both are very rigid surface-wise, but the color is just not there, so applying this first would mean that I would have to paint the rocks. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and comment below. Thanks for watching. Cheers!